Today we're diving into one of the most popular electrodes out there. That's your 7018 stick rod. And I got a few tips for you. Now I've been doing this for over 20 years now, and I've broken it down to five things that if I was given when I first started out, it would have made my life a lot easier. Let's get going. So if you're looking to improve your welds, especially for structural work or fabrication, that 7018 is gonna be a must. We're gonna go over settings, arc length, angles, and technique. Before we strike an arc, let's talk about what makes that 7018 unique. This one here is an AWS classification. Your E stands for electrode. Now your 70 is your minimum tensile strength as welded. Your next digit is your one, and this is the position that it can be welded in. This means that it can be welded in all position. Now your one and your eight together is your chemical composition. This is gonna tell you if it's a structural rod. It's gonna tell you what type of penetration. It's gonna tell you the polarity. The eight indicates that it's a low hydrogen rod filled with iron powder. Now the big question is whether or not these rods need to be kept in an oven. The short answer to that is yes, but for practicing and non-critical welds, not always. However, this rod does run nicely whenever it is conditioned properly. For any structural application or critical weld, these rods should be kept in an oven around 250 Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. And this is to prevent any moisture absorption in that rod and to avoid any weld failure later on down the road due to hydrogen. For a 1 8 of an inch electrode, 3.2 millimeters, I like running this between 110 to 130 amps. However, there are tons of charts and weld applications that you can make reference to. It's best to check with the manufactured recommended settings. For a 332 rod, I like to drop this somewhere between 75 and 110 amps. For a 532, somewhere between 145 and 170. If you're new or just starting out to this rod, start at the lower end of that range. Smooth and steady wins the race. Use as much heat as you can handle within those manufactured recommended settings. When it comes to striking an arc, I like the scratch method. Drag the rod like a matchstick, then lift slightly to establish the arc. If you're running it in the flat and horizontal, drag along the plate, then draw it back to the start. This technique will avoid any cold start. The rod needs a certain amount of voltage to establish a good hot start. In the vertical, strike down from the top or scrape off the edge of the plate. Long arc it a little bit and move in quick. Some machines have a hot start feature. This will allow you to move in immediately. Once you get the arc going, hold a tight arc length between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch away, roughly the diameter of the rod. Too long and you'll lose control, too short and you risk sticking. Aside from being comfortable and having a good arc length, your angles are extremely important to having that consistent weld. For fillet welds, keep your work angle at about 90 degrees to that plate or half the included angle. Travel angle, tilt the rod between zero and 10 degrees in the direction of travel. Too much travel angle or inclination will cause your welds to be narrow and crowned up. We want a flat to slightly convex weld. When running stringer beads, move at a steady pace. Establish the puddle size in the beginning, somewhere between 3 8 to a half of an inch. Continue and keep that consistent all the way along. A good indication of an arc length too long is that your whole work area is lit up and you can see everything clear as day. You should only be able to see that puddle and the peripherals. Too short of an arc length usually indicates whenever the puddle is wrapping around that electrode. All right, so we just talked about settings. We talked about those basic parameters such as angle, arc length, travel speed. We took our time, we went through it. Now I want to talk about probably one of the most important aspects of stick welding, and that's puddle recognition. Recognizing that puddle is probably the single most important thing you can do as a welder. Watch the puddle closely. With 7018, you want to see a smooth, fluid puddle that fills the joint evenly off the center line. You want the puddle to be reflective and shiny. Watch the toes of the welds, those are the sides and make sure it's not just gouging into the side of the plate. We call that undercut. Stay at the leading edge of the puddle. If the puddle starts to get ahead of you, this is because you're not traveling fast enough. Speed up or adjust your angle slightly. If you have proper settings and you notice undercut or poor fusion, check your travel speed and rod angle. Now this last one is also super important. You wanna get comfortable. You wanna be as relaxed and as comfortable as you can. If you're having trouble getting through that whole joint, you can always offset your body a little bit. If you're good in the beginning and towards the end, you sort of get uncomfortable, try making yourself less comfortable in the beginning, better towards the middle and best at the end. 
Now, just before we sign off, here's a few mistakes with 7018 and how to fix them. This rod lays one of the nicest welds, but it's a lot less forgiving at times. Remind yourself to keep a tight arc length. A long arc length. This causes spatter and sometimes pinholes in the weld. If your arc length is changing throughout your weld, it's gonna leave inconsistencies in that appearance. The next one is incorrect travel angle. This leads to poor fusion and irregular looking weld. Keep your travel angle centered on that joint at all times. Number three, traveling too fast or slow. This affects bead shape. Find that sweet spot. Establish your puddle size in the beginning. For a 1 8 rod, try producing a puddle that's between 3 8 and a half of an inch. There you have it folks, that was my solid overview of 7018 welding. If you learned something, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions or you want me to cover something different, drop it in the comments. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.